Oh, hello ladies and gentlemen, and I welcome you to my newly titled uh, automotive section. I recently came up with this in the last radio show. This is episode 238, and this is the going to be the gear change show. Um, the reason why I picked the gear change show is because a lot of the shows over in Europe either their top gear or fifth gear, top gear and fifth gear so thought I'd call it the gear change show so since it's automotive and what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to tell you guys a story of you know either a iconic brand an engine or maybe a race team so the race team that I'm going to talk about today focus on that Chevrolet logo right there. It's not the Sunoco one, but the one with the bow tie on it. That is Roger Penske. Roger Penske, got to be one of my favorite team owners of all time. And what a rule following, but rule bending genius this guy was. He read the rule book and he found out how to exploit every rule to try to get the best he could. Um, and this car right here was one of his exceptions. So, and, uh, you know, it's, he's one of my favorites. He's known for the dog, he's known for this, the Indy car, the, the beast, the Indy car, the 1994 Indy 500 winning uh, Mercedes Elmore engine that completely dominated the Indy 500. But I'm gonna start back to one of his greatest triumphs now this was kind of the start of his rule bending slash rule of itch taking ways but he let me just put this straight roger penske did not exploit any loopholes he didn't break any rules he read the rule book and he got and he got what he needed to out of it he basically sat there and told the rule makers okay you guys say this in the rule book, but you guys do not say what length it needs to be, how many, how what the compression ratio needs to be, or how light it has to be. If the chassis has to be light, this light, do the wheels have to do this? Do we have to refuel this fast? Um, this car is one of those cars. Uh, for those of you who do not know, this is a Trans Am Camaro from 2000, from 1967. We how we can tell those tail lamps. That Coke bottle style and also those sectioned off lights. The reason why I'm not doing this during the night time is because this car does not have lights. I will, sh I will show you guys really quickly what I mean by this. I can switch back. And yeah, you're going to see that there's no lighting uh, whatsoever here. I'm going to switch to neutral and bring you guys back to the original. Uh, so yeah, so this car had a 302 V8, and um, I'm gonna tell you some of the really crazy things they did with this car. So, and how it would piss off Ford, and how that would begin, um, how that would, you know, how that would. Uh, I mean, Penske was a team owner, and he was also a racer. Um, I think he stopped racing in '73, but he was definitely a team owner. Um, and I think he became a team owner, de facto team owner in 74. Uh, he was kind of just a small Chevrolet dealer. This is one of the commandos from the Chevrolet uh, dealership. And this car broke the rule. No, didn't break the rules, but he bent the rules. So, um, so if you guys aren't familiar with Trans Am racing, um, you need to have a 305 maximum 5 liter V8, probably producing somewhere in the region of 400 to 500, like 50 horsepower. This probably made about 450. And it's time you know the game quotes at 410 and 190 miles an hour. I highly doubt it can do 190 miles an hour. I think they might be uh, fibbing there. I think it might be only, I think I've only seen this thing do about 160. <clears throat> If you give it a long enough strain and you shut the air dams, you probably get 190. But um, so so yeah, uh, Penske 
definitely knew how to exploit the rule book and he definitely knew what to do and he definitely knew how to make it he definitely knew his cars when he wanted to so So this car had a lot of tricks to it. So what do you do to bend the rules? So the trick with this one was he used to acid dip the chassis and it made the car lighter than everything else. The only re the only way they were able to get past this is during qualifying. They would uh, send the acid dip car out, and they would switch it to. They would switch the Mark Donahue's seven. I'm a six for a seven, and send him on his way. Qualify, then give then take the rules compliant number seven a spare chassis and give it to the rule makers and it was compliant he was running over 250 pounds lighter he was also doing much he was also refueling faster and I think this is one of those acid cars so I'll open us up a bit I think this is a period correct track. So yeah, so this this car right here was well engineered and Penske sort of took advantage of that. His philosophy: If I can exploit it, I'll, I'll, I'll ch if I can challenge the rule book and buy and exploit it, I'll do it. And he did very clearly. Another. Uh, Another one of his crazy inventions. How about the Porsche 97? How about the how about the Ferrari 512S? Five 512S, which we made a 512M. Um, basically he took the V12 out of that, gave it to his engine builder Traco, which made the engines, which made the five-liter engines for these. And he was able to get another 50 horsepower out of the engine, and the aerodynamics were able to give it a top speed of 106, 206 at Daytona when most cars were doing only 190, 195, and it handled well. So, but let me uh, let me show you that very car. So. So yeah, so this is the Trans Am Camaro, and I'm gonna jump to that car and I'll show you show you what that piece is like. I believe this game has that said car. So so if we go to Ferrari, I'm gonna still go at Laguna Seca, uh, uh, Ferrari. All the way down. This was part of a. I think. Yeah, yes, it is. I have the Kirk F. White car, and this is the car that Roger Penske made so famous. This is the Traco engine, so.
they entered in, I believe, four races. I believe they entered uh, the Sebring 12 hour, the Daytona 24 hour, the Wagons Glen 6 hour, and I think the 24 hours of Le Mans in 1971. Uh, with this very car. This is the 12M, M for Mata Vikita. Um, so yeah, this is one of those cars that really, really kind of separated the men from the boys. So, so yeah, so this car, so yeah, so he did quite a number on did quite a number with these uh these great quite a number with these great cars although the next car on this list the next car on the list i can't really tell you about the mercedes um indy car but um i can probably drive one of the one of his other ones one of his road course ones that are in the game but yeah so then he moved on to the porsche 917 k which I don't really study on the outlap. This was kind of the first car that kind of had a This was one of the first cars that kind of got the whole Penske Penske treatment, you know. And everybody in the in Penske's organization was well was well dressed. Everybody was organized. He made sure they were crew professionally. He made sure no one was everybody was in a low count and stuff like that. He made sure that, that no one really. Everybody looked professional and stuff like that, but but underneath the good looks, there was always a mastermind of rule breakers. Not only was he able to get more power out of this car and made it rev better, it was a very, very resilient car. Got into a bunch of crashes. But, you know, I think the best we got was third out of it. Very responsive with the big tires. Turn in. Like Penske knew how to build a race car. And people around him knew it. He just was very professional. Knew what equipment to get. And then the 917 came out. 917, probably one of the coolest cars ever. Penske was able to get a thousand horsepower out of it. And, and he knew, you know, the more, the more horsepower you have, the bigger the engine, the more horsepower you're going to have. So, 5.4 liter V12 twin turbo. Flat 12 twin turbo. Making over a thousand horsepower. I mean, this thing is squirrely. So while Penske did very well 
in many forms of racing. This was, the, you know, the early 60s, early late 60s, early 70s. Uh, he delved into Formula One. Uh, he started delving into IndyCar late 70s, early 80s, with um, with the when the turbo cars were were big back then, and um, the blue and yellow that he was known for adorned a lot of his cars. And yes, the reason how you can tell this is a Penske is because it says Penske on the side. Kind of a no-brainer. As I said, V12, 600 horsepower, capable on capable on most tracks to do 100, to do 220 to 230. You know, depending on aerodynamic configuration. But this was more of a handling one. A lot of people went the 12S or the Code Lounge. Um, that's 12 quilt longer which was the high speed version um but yeah he this was a car that exploited the aerodynamic rolls you can see on the back a lot of 917 a lot of 9 512s's would have this would be back on it and would have um kind of the real wing kind of not do it up like that but it wouldn't have flicks on the back it would have a full tail um this air box and there's actually a story I don't know if you guys can see that um, is it on there uh, let me go let me go into the cockpit for you guys very quickly you guys notice um, there's a on, on most oh, don't look down here uh, for the oh yeah by the way um, that's not because Roger had a had a well it's kind of technically Roger because you know it's it's got a wood green shifter but I want you guys to point up to this see how uh, there in the view screen there's a cutout well uh, Mark Donahue who's taller than David Hobbs David Hobbs drove this with Mark Donahue back in uh, 70 back in 71 and you're gonna notice there's also um, there's not a bump on it um, there's no gurney bump but Donahue's head came up to about where my driver is about where my driver is I think that might be Donahue himself actually in the, uh, in the cockpit the ghost of Mark Donahue. David Hobbs was scrunched down a little bit. He would have a view like this. He would have a kind of a view like this um, versus Donahue. He would kind of be really. He'd be right up there. He would have to peer his head. He would. You just have to look at that. Um, he'd have to do that. See how and and I like it that. This game does it for me. And he'd have to peer up. While he's doing this, let me get back on track here so I can demonstrate some more. But yeah, he'd have... But yeah, he'd have to crank his neck just to get to that one just to get to that thing and you know it was one of these little things that he kind of figured out and you know Penske always made sure his drivers were good his driver said the best very professional guy uh, always his um, his maximum was always effort equals results and um, it kind of shows in all of his endeavors because if he didn't have that attitude we probably he probably wouldn't have the dynasty uh, that he has today, which can go on forever. So, uh, so this is, if I'm not mistaken, the Roger Penske Enterprises. He had two of them, I think. He, uh, but Brumos had a couple. Uh, these are fake teams. I do not know why they're here, Mike. Yeah, these are uh, these are martini colors. 
golf racing, Valiant, uh, that Valiant's weird. But, but yeah, this was the first, first time he had one of these. Um, I'm gonna go to a different track because I don't wish to, but yeah, this car was pretty bonkers. You wanna talk about the unfair advantage? So, so, so uh, this series was called uh, Can-Am, and Can-Am was all about horsepower and displacement and stuff like that. So, a lot of people So a lot of people were like, you know, cubic inches meant horsepower. But what happened was is, is in 1972, 1971, 72, Penske came out with this car and Uh, so you have a personal best of 29 seconds on this track um, through hot lapping. Uh, so, so yeah, so this beast of a car, um, let me reiterate that this thing was nuts. I just want to make sure I have all the downforce I need because I need to make sure I'm going to last you telling this story without crashing into the wall because this thing is crazy. This thing, the game quotes it around 1100, but going Penske, you want to go for a little bit more. So, again, that probably looks like Mark Donahue again. So. So let me switch this. So, what did what did Penske do? So basically, a lot of cars back then were running 8.4 9 liter V8 engines. So what did Penske do? Penske's like, screw that. I'm gonna have the displacement turbocharge it. Uh, so he took the 5.4. He basically took a 5.0 flat 12 and launched it to 5.4 put twin turbos on it and said, hey fellas, this is what we're gonna do. And as I reiterated, this thing's not easy to drive. why I'm going super easy on this because this car is crazy. See I got up to 170 like it was nothing. So yeah, this exploited the rule book by basically making this thing super fast. Making it 1200 horsepower. And it's basically throwing away the rule book. And Penske would dominate 72, 73, 74. Basically, 
And then we carry off into the 80s with his Indy cars. So yeah, so the reason why I'm not talking is because I'm trying to concentrate on controlling this beast. I'm not going to go for it over at lap time because uh, you can see this thing's a nasty mate. So yeah, this would be kind of, so this is some of the Roy's really, really Exploitation by Roger, by Roger Vensky and Mark Donahue. As I said, 1200 horsepower. engine off so yeah Roger Penske this is definitely one of his more one of his finest machines he's uh, the the last iteration made about 1400 made about 1540 horsepower this makes about 1200 because I believe because it's Penske the boost is up so but you know that's not the uh, end of It's not the end of uh, the Penske. It wasn't all about uh, it wasn't all about uh, you know it wasn't all about cars and it wasn't all about you know blowing the doors off uh, cars and everything but what Penske is well known for obviously is this track I'm actually not going to do the Indy 500 track um, so he's well known for his Indianapolis endeavors mostly so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the road course I'm going to pick one of his cars um, Ganassi is not Ganassi is not Chevrolet he's Honda I don't know why this game did that so I can either do willpower um, Castro Neves or Pagano but I want to do I think that might be my toy, I'm not sure, but I'm just gonna pick this one and we're gonna go to the road course because I feel a little bit better with this one and so this is practically Penske's uh This is practically Penske's playground because for those of you who know Penske, he's pretty much his one like He's won like, I don't know, 17, 8500s. Um, and he's won with, 
Al Unser, Al Unser, Al Bobby Unser, um, Al Unser Jr., of course, with uh, the 94 IndyCar win. Uh, he, Simon Pagano, to name a few. So, these cars, this was kind of, this is kind of not loophole breaking Roger Penske, but uh, Roger knows how to get the best out of his cars, and this is no exception. Um, these cars kind of have fallen to be a bit stale over the years. They're, you see, they're kind of blocky. If you if you know the if those of you old enough to know about the 94 and 500, you guys will know that the cars look way better than this, and not these blocky, chunky messes of basically arrow appendages. This thing looks like it's out of a sci-fi thriller, basically. But you know, it's got 720 horsepower, capable of 200 miles an hour, and. Well, capable of doing but Penske's other unfair advantage finding good talent he always seems to have the best of the best because as he said the expert equals results folks Yeah, so he's employed Will Power, Helio Castro Neves, Joe LaFarren, Mark Donahue. And he's, uh, you know, he's employed some very good folks over the years and So yeah, he didn't, and especially catch the numbers of DeFerrin, both um, both championship winners. Yeah, so Roger Penske, you know, he's, Going into greater, greater things in life, you know. He's got the Indian. He's got the Indianapolis 500 as is. He owns Indian, Indianapolis Motor Speedway, so it's well known. So yeah, I'm just gonna stop it right there. So, so yeah. So Roger Penske, he's uh, been quite the 
he's quite the guy and you know he's uh he's he's uh he's done some really interesting things in his lifetime he's uh he's owned chevy dealerships he's it's the reason why he's a big chevy brand ambassador i mean he does actually run with ford in nascar and in uh fiat supercars but he's very cool for um indycar because uh especially his verizon if you see a verizon um if you see a verizon wireless uh logo on an indycar it's most likely going to be penske and if it's silver red or silver black red if it's silver and red or black and red or uh marlboro orange and orange and white um it's definitely uh roger penske and he's definitely known for those colors more in the 90s when he was sponsored by marlboro but uh but that blue and yellow is um a pretty attractive color it kind of reminds me now that i'm actually with a company called restaurant depot that also has its company has its colors blue and yellow so i kind of like the fact that roger and i started out with with the same colors uh same favorite colors for our for our team i know that i was in red for a while but uh, but penske he was a loophole guy it, you know some of the stories that he did you know he he would uh put the refilling tanks um high in the air and get the get the cars to fuel and um you know he would put flat bottom floors on his race cars and stuff like that he would and he was a very successful racer and then um then he decided to focus on his uh, racing career um at the uh at racing career uh his uh his ownership career and then eventually we all know how that turned out uh, but yeah, uh, Roger Penske, probably one of the most interesting people of my, of the, of the many generations and definitely inspiration to, you know, working towards your goals to my generation. My favorite story though of all time is the Indianapolis 500 in 1994 though with the Beast. Uh, for those of you who haven't read the book Beast by Jay Gers, please read it. If you are interested in engines, mechanical know-how and some in trying to achieve the impossible read the book you won't be just you won't be uh you won't be uh you won't be entirely um so yeah and uh his business ethic i kind of like it it's uh it's closer to what my dad would be like be like you know effort equals results and my dad's kind of like that too so it's kind of so i kind of look up to roger and him so um but yeah so you know roger penske probably one of the most prolific guys in sports car racing he's worth millions and billions he's worth billions of dollars and you know him being probably one of the top team owners i know chip ganassi is cool but roger penske will always be the guy will always be that guy ganassi hasn't been around long enough that he may have won a couple indy 500s but he may have some formula one champions but um but uh penske has you know sports car experience um one other car that he kind of did that he kind of did was also the porsche um uh, this porsche 911 rsr in this game that actually is actually his i'm going to show you guys in a uh i'm going to show you guys in a uh the porsche if i can get it so yeah um yeah so right here um sunoco porsche showroom so yeah you'll notice you know it's a certain sticker on the uh you know it's a certain you know it's a certain sticker on there i don't know if i can get close but i'm going to try to yeah penske performance parts and yeah, you can tell this is in uh, yeah new 
and you used to use, you know, champion spark plugs. So yeah, this was sort of, you know, Penske picked the best of the best. And see the brake ducts right there under the chassis. So yeah, he uh, so he had a pretty prolific career, and this was the last car he ever raced, actually. I don't know if I have one of his originals, but but yeah, he usually yeah, you know, he he raced this sort of thing. So he raced this, and this was his last last thing he would race in, and uh, he found. And he found, uh, you know, Petsky Racing in 74. And uh, he he still owns some dealerships today. And uh, he's a pretty prolific guy. And he's kind of one of the top businessmen in our bar time. And I like his business model. It's one I want to, it's one I want to try to emulate, hopefully, when I do cars in the next couple of years. So, yeah. All right, guys. This has been a, this has been a uh, gear time. This has been a uh, episode of the gear, t of the gear change show. I'm Aaron Wilson, Mike Camo here, bringing you, the, bringing you the story and the cars of Roger Penske, maybe one of the most prolific race car team owners, drivers of our time. Um, definitely the uh, ever the rule book bender and explorer. Um, and uh, he, uh, I, he, inadvertently, you know, he probably didn't help out the split. A lot of his actually probably didn't help with the split in the mid 90s. So, yeah, but I'll talk about that in another story when I talk about the Indianapolis 500 and I go through some Indy cars because next episode I might actually do a, a uh, story on, you know, the history of the Indianapolis 500. I might run some cars there that are based around the Indy 500. So I hope you guys do that and I will actually test the... Uh, cars. I'm gonna have to test to see if I can get you guys 230, 240 miles an hour, but no, no promises. But yeah, this has been another. This has been an episode. This has been Radio Show episode 238, the Gear Change, the Gear Change Show. Uh, which your humble host, Mike Camo. I hope you guys have a good night, and I will see you guys in the next episode. I plan to put 239 out. It's a regular vlog. Peace out, folks. And effort equals results, folks. And happy motoring.